Guy Harvey, artist, scientist, angler, diver, conservationist, and family man. Journey with Guy to the world's greatest fishing waters, where every fish, every fight is a window on another world where every catch is a portrait from the deep, waiting to be painted. Go exploring with Guy in the last wild country under the waves. For the last 50 years, high seas longline fishing on an industrial scale has reduced the populations of oceanic species of fish to a mere percentage of their former levels. Hi, I'm Guy Harvey, and in this week's expedition of Portraits from the Deep, I visit Baja California, one of the few places in the eastern Pacific Ocean where you find some local abundance of the magnificent striped marlin. Our striped marlin odyssey begins at a remote location 200 miles north of Cabo San Lucas on the Baja Peninsula called Magdalena Bay. Our journey started with a flight to La Paz and is followed by a four hour drive across the desert to the small Pacific port of San Carlos. Situated on the protective waters of the bay, San Carlos is now a major fish handling and fish processing facility for the Mexican domestic fishing fleet. In San Carlos, we join our charter, the 48-foot liverboard called the Garota. And with marlin on our minds, we prepare to go to sea. Our guides are Gary Graham and fly fishing expert Ray Barker-Smith. And my team of intrepid explorers includes world-renowned sculptor Kent Ulberg, plus Bill Boyce, a close friend and brilliant photojournalist, and my good friend Charlie Foreman. While the emphasis of the expedition is to film the natural feeding behavior of marlin, we hope to cast a fly or two as well. Our fearless leader, Gary Graham, has led many successful fly fishing expeditions in Baja and is the author of the popular book, Baja on the Fly. We head out to the Placid Bay and toward the Thetis Bank, and soon enough, Gary puts us in the zone. We see frigate birds stacked up over hordes of marlin that are working the schools of sardines. High up in the bucket, Gary has a frigate's eye view of the proceedings. These bait balls are aggregations of smaller fish that are herded into a compact school by their larger predators. In order to minimize the chance of any one sardine being taken out by a predator, they press together constantly on the move, thereby presenting a more difficult target and making it harder for the predator to lock on to a single fish. As we learn from this experience, the marlins and sea lions are very patient once they've acquired and corralled a bait ball at the surface. When not being attacked, the sardines feed heavily on plankton, the base of the food chain in this oceanic marine habitat. The whole food chain here, you know. In cruise mode, a striped marlin has a pastel coloration, blending in with the blue background, and its fins are folded back for streamlining and efficiency. But when it is time to feed, the vertical stripes light up so brightly they seem to fluoresce against the darker background. All their fins are extended for maneuverability as they coordinate the attack with the other members in the school. Their close relative, the black marlin, is in contrast a loner, a hunter that relies on stealth, speed and surprise to catch its prey. 